Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome back to Space Engineers. Today we are reviewing the First Order Dreadnought, otherwise known as the Mandate to Four Class Siege Dreadnought, but commonly known as First Order Dreadnought. Now this amazing creation is built in the game Space Engineers by Alpha Wing 5. It popped on the Steam Workshop about a week ago and I thought, damn, I need to review this pretty quickly because everyone's been asking me for one of these for ages. So, here we are today with the First Order Dreadnought. Obviously first seen in The Last Jedi, it was kind of quite awesome. I mean, it technically it's first seen in Battlefront 2 before The Last Jedi because you stole the plans for it, but that was pretty cool. Check out my Battlefront 2 campaign if you haven't seen that already. Now, let's get into this. So if you don't know about the Mandate for Siege Dreadnought, uh, basically it's the First Order's giant starship. It's 7,600 meters long. That's tw almost 25,000 feet. Um, the one we saw in The Last Jedi was called the Full Matrix, I believe. And that was uh, quite big. And obviously we know what happened to that. If you've seen The Last Jedi, you know what happened to that dreadnought. It was still quite cool. But obviously it's impressive arms. It's got two giant cannons on it as well. But it's also got a weird and controversial shape. Now the reason I say a controversial shape is a lot of people aren't happy with the design is. If I can find the image I'm looking for in my head, I'll pop it up now of what people say it should look like. But, you know, this is what we've got instead. Anyway, this is a brilliant recreation inside Space Engineers. Alpha Wing 5 says this is my recreation of a Mandate 5 Dreadnought from the Star's Last Jedi. The ship is in excess of 31,000 blocks and propelled by hydrogen thrusters that have been spaced and not to cause damage to the ship. All systems are conveyed with multiple redundancies to give the Dreadnought some much needed survivability. As the ship is created for use in vanilla space engines, the orbital auto cannons are armed with rocket launchers. However, with the appropriate mods such as battle cannons and shield generators, Star's weapons, the Dreadnought should be able to live up to its reputation as a fleet killer. Doesn't mean it's referred to as a fleet killer in The Last Jedi, now that is quite awesome. But anyway, let's break down and actually look at some of the detailing on this ship. Now obviously the compelling part of this is it's going to be the two giant cannons below. We see what they do in The Last Jedi, I'm not going to step on any spoilers here, but you can kind of guess what they do, given the name of the actual Siege Dreadnought, but there we go. Now these are quite cool, they do actually fold out in a minute, I think we could try this now. If we sit in the seat over here, look at that, they're moving. So if you've seen The Last Jedi, you're going to like this, but just, uh, that's uh, pretty cool. You may fire when ready. They're on rotors basically for people who understand space engineers and they're just tilting down like that. Now as I said, they are armed with missile launchers from the vanilla game a minute, meaning they won't do much power. But if you were to mod this ship for your own liking and using sort of like Star's weapons and battle cannons, you could create a similar sort of damage. And I believe... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that. Now obviously this only has a range of about 800 meters, I think, off the top of my head, I forget. But yeah, that's actually not going to go very far and not going to cause much damage. But still, quite cool to see them. Then we can obviously go, uh, I think they wind back up, don't they? Oh, there we go. Yeah, they're going back up now. That is still quite cool. So this is the most selling point now, and I think I might have to mod this at some point to see if you can actually do that, like with some like OP cannons. It would be pretty cool. But yeah, we'll look at everything else we have in a later. Get up seat for a minute. They also have hangar base on the sides here. These are obviously where all the Tie Fighters come out of. You could probably fit some small Tie Fighters in here, but uh, you may have to shave a level of blocks off if you want to fit like perfect blinky ships in here. That's one thing I'm gonna say. But yeah, still hangers there. Lots of PODs on this ship here. Point defenses. We've got missile turrets hidden in the side as well. These are very nicely encased in here. But it does limit the view of the missile cannon, sadly, so that's one thing to bear on it. We've got quite a lot of weapons. We've got mini um, auto defense turrets over here. On the top here, from following on from Last Jedi, again, we have lots of armor plating sticking out. We also follow on from the same sort of armor plating design as utilizing this sort of layout here. I always like this sort of design in Star Wars. It flows through a lot of the um, Imperial ships and First Order. Then also we have the circular thing up here. I don't know what it's called. I've not done that much research into the Mandate here, so I have no idea what this circle thing's called. But basically this must be the power core or reactor is what I'm guessing, because it kind of leads down into most of the centre of the ship. So let's just call it the power core for a minute. That would make more sense, because I don't think it actually goes anywhere, does it? Now in here it just goes through to a corridor. That kind of sums up how useless it is in that case. <laughs> but very good. That's the sort of power core there. It all leads up into there. Then also we do have the very wide bridge outbook there and it's kind of weird I don't know why they made the bridge so wide for like a Star Destroyer thing it didn't really like match up with the rest of the First Order fleet but hey I guess it kind of does with a fat sort of slope um flat slope because if you look at the um sort of have a finalizer and other whatever those ships are called again uh, they actually match it rather well but hey that's uh not too bad anyway Moving around again, we've got the sort of tiered front up here again, following off the most First Order designs. They have a similar sort of design here at the front there, almost like a, it's almost like a ship in a way, upside down ship. Not really, but yeah, it, you kind of match it there. This ship is also made all out of heavy armor as well, so if you feel like taking this into battle in Space Engineers, it is going to be able to take a hit, which is quite good to know, because sometimes, like myself, uh, we build ships in vanilla and they, they are basically like paper. 
On the back here we have all the engines, now these are done in LCDs to give the impression they are the stars ones, when in fact these are just LCD blocks, but we have hydrogen stuff hidden behind it. Now Alpha Wing 5 has an amazing thing here, instead of making it so you have to turn hydrogen damage off or fuss damage off, he's hidden them so for buck they won't burn armor anyway. Thank you so much for doing this man, it saves a lot of time for people to ask. Got an internal command center in here, we'll pop around the insides in a minute. Mostly just engines and everything hidden inside here, which is pretty cool and straightforward. Awesome. Going over the top here, we also have another section of weapons up here. These are Gatling guns, so these can be even bigger uh, point defense as well. But mostly listed all over the top there is your mini point defense cannons. These can get shot off by X-Wing pilots who feel they need to fly too close to the ship. But that's about it for the detailing. Roughly the ship is mostly the same. Obviously we've got the auto cannons under there. or not auto cannons, the siege cannons I guess you could call them. And that is roughly about it. We're going to take a look inside now, starting on a bridge, and basically go from here. So this is the main command bridge of the Dreadnought, we've got a quite cool things here, these are almost like your periscopes in a way. You look through these to check you're on target and stuff like that, which I kind of like the addition. I, I always like that in sci-fi when you meet old technology and cross it with sort of the new futuristic stuff. That's one of the TV shows Battlestar Galactica really like, but yeah that's cool anyway. We've got floor plan scripts up here as well. One thing to know if you're going to download this from the link in the description, the floor plan script does lag this to death, and I mean basically you need to turn it off because it will increase lag sometimes, and I have a few reports of people saying it's not very friendly. So when you spawn this in it will lag, just pop in and turn the programmable block off the floor plan. But anyway, this is the bridge of the Dreadnought, and we've got a couple of doors over here, I think these may lead to the other side. Yeah, these lead to the other side, so it's like a little giant con tower. Now I don't know if the interior of the ship is going to be accurate, I'm going to presume it's not. Uh, because we didn't actually get to see that much of a dreadnought inside compared to like we've seen the finalizer uh, We've seen inside those. So yeah, that's uh, going to be a little bit difficult We'll pop down the elevator now the other side's the same by the way, and I think our first floor should be here Ta-da! Yes, this is another bridge. I believe um, yeah, it is this must be like another lower bridge That's CIC, but you're sort of on ground level here where you can see out and see most of the other parts of the ship Which is pretty cool because you can see things on coming towards you. That's why I don't know but I don't know whether I'm a particular fan of a Mandator, because it seems such a flat and weird looking ship. I don't know, a lot of people have complained about it, or criticised it because it doesn't like stay true to Star Wars, but, eh, nah, opinions opinions. So we're back in the other command centre I accidentally walked into a minute ago, lots more windows and stuff down here, loads of control seats including lights, we've also got another floor plan thing there. This can be seen as like sort of a back command centre because the bridge is a bit exposed sometimes, which is fair enough. I'm liking the design of a corridor here, that's really nice. Yeah, it's been nicely designed corridors. Uh, excuse the lighting glitch, by the way, that is an error of space at the minute. Sadly, we cannot do anything about that. Going through here, this seems like the interior workings of the, the Dreadnought, and I quite like this as well. These reactors lined up here. This is awesome. It's for like a fan made interior. This is really nice. Seeing all this lined up here with all the oxygen blocks and everything like that, and the hydrogen containers and ammo containers. That's just really nice. Oh, have we got like uh, blocks we can come in? Oh, there's spotlights inside. Look at that. Can we turn them on? Uh, let's see. Spot. Engine room spotlights. Online. Oh Jesus Christ. Okay, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Look at that. Now we turn on. There you go, so you've got sort of engine room spotlights there to light the way. That's fair enough. Uh, we'll probably turn them off in a minute because it's going to be lagging. This ship does uh, cause a bit of lag, by the way, which is unfortunate, but we can't really do anything about it. It is kind of a large ship to have in space units, but hey, we've got a ship in space units. We're going to turn on my light in a minute. That's another door to the engine room. Don't need to go through that. Interior turrets as well, so this ship is very uh, heavily armed against anybody who feels boarding or attacking it, which is always a good sign. This lighting bug is really annoying. Going through here, we're underneath the reactor now, the uh, giant circle thing on top as we're going to nickname it. We've got the main sort of corridor down here, and I believe this does lead into the hangar here, I think? I may be proved wrong. Ta-da! This is the hangar in here, so this is where your TIE fighters would launch from. Your first order TIE fighters and your uh, special forces TIE fighters, they're really cool. Which is kind of cool, but like I said, my only concern is the hangar bay, not really going to fit much in it. It's kind of asking for a small set of TIE fighters there, so, uh, yeah, that's the issue. I don't know, that might have to be changed at some point if you want to launch TIE fighters mix. I don't think anyone's got any smaller ones. Now, obviously, the opposite hangar bay there is the same, so I don't need to show you that. We're going to keep going forward. I'm actually a really fan of these corridor designs here. They're really nice. Especially making use of the half blocks as well. Oh, we have a red door. We need to go in that. Let's go. What do we got in here? We've got more pipes. That is a dangerous door hunter. <laughs> Just getting burnt by those. Obviously that's an engineering section there. I love the doors like colour coded in a way. That kind of really helps out. Up here we have sort of the uh, jump drive. Stored in an odd, odd place, but we've got most of the engineering things here. Also got the gravity generator, a few more seats. It's like the front command centre. A very good place to have it. I mean, you wouldn't really need it anywhere else. But yeah guys, this is mostly the first order dreadnought. It's quite powerful. It can deal a bit of damage. And um, would you guys like to see a battle of this at some point? I'm pretty sure we could probably uh, mod it out a little bit, to maybe have some Star Wars weapons on it. 
and probably face it up against something. The only thing is, it's kind of small. Where we see it now, it's uh, very small, meaning it's not as big as a normal Imperial Star Destroyer. However, we could probably do some magic stuff to make it look like an Imperial, look like it's bigger than the Imperial Star Destroyer. We could probably do that. So a little bit of fun facts about this. It's got light, heavy, and um, blast or block armor on it. So if you do feel like taking this into battle, you're going to have quite a thing. Thrusters, you've got 492 hydrogen. The unladen mass is 3,914 kilograms and 31,686 blocks. Uh, theater of operations is space and low gravity. So it can go into a low field of gravity. I just wouldn't recommend taking it into a planet's full atmosphere. But yes, other than that, this has been the First Order Dreadnought. Let me know down below in the comments if you'd like to see a battle of this thing. I think it'd be quite cool to uh, maybe like get the Star Fortresses, you know, the First Order Bombers, and see if we can match it up against anything. Especially having X-Wings trying to take off all those turrets. It could be quite cool. That might be a good scenario to film. We're, we're going to look into that. Anyway, guys, I've been Cam Jack here today reviewing the Alpha Wing 5's Mandatea Class 4 Siege Dreadnought. A very cool AK the first order dreadnought. If you did like it, make sure to click the link in the description. You can go down and get it from Steamworks yourself, download it, and play it in space. It is just remember the warning about turning off the floor plan scripts. They will lag it to absolute death. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We've got a ton more Star Wars stuff coming over the course of this year. Make sure to leave a like on the video as well, and let me know what you thought of it down below in the comment section. Also, yes, do you want to bow? Comment that down below as well. I've been Captain Jack. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.